Um, it's ridiculous. And what it does is it diverts the attention away from the text of the bill. You're catching flack when you're over the target. You have to stand up for your freedom, your family. That This time is for you, not for somebody else. If you wait for somebody else to do it, you'll all be in the boxcar together. <laughs> It's a Thought Police Free Zone, the Liberty Lineup Radio Show, where independent thought just can't be bought. I'm an American. I wanted to share with you, guys, with all of our listeners, the Salt Lake Tribune did an article talking to the, it was, a, it, it was an opinion piece, it was an editorial directed to the legislators like Mike Noel and Ken Ivory, and basically accusing us of, uh, of uh, I don't know, well, it's kind of hard to read, I mean, th either that they're saying we're going to be violent, or that the government's going to be violent, but... As we know, that it's the government that's always been proven to be the violent ones in these in these uh, in these things. We, the Patriots, have never initiated any violence. You've got Waco, you've got Ruby Ridge, you've got Lavoy Finicum. It's always been the government that has been the one that's instigated the violence and it's been violent. In all of those cases I mentioned, the uh, well, especially with Ruby Ridge and with with Lavoy. They initiated, and they didn't even respond with violence at all. At Ruby Ridge, they had um, the, gov the FBI shot a little boy in the back when he was running after his dog, and they shot a mother holding her baby in her arms, and there was no response from, from anyone. And so to, so it would be pretty ridiculous for the Salt Lake Tribune to say that uh, the patriots or the, the people that are supporting the Constitution would be initiating any violence. Well, the Salt Lake Tribune is ridiculous, Ben. <laughs> They're holding fast to their brand. That's <laughs> so their branding of being ridiculous? They're not letting anybody down. You know what you're getting. <laughs> the, the, the title of the uh, editorial is, Split in Land Grab Movement Could Turn Violent. So who are they saying is going to turn violent? It, uh, it's, it's the, it starts off with, it's all very funny until someone gets hurt. And then he gets into talking about HB 276, which a part of it um, really attacks the power of the sheriff in the state. And then it uh, goes into to talk to how – so the establishment has decided who is the rational voice in this discussion. And so if the establishment tells you who you should be looking towards for the official position, that tells you what the official position of the establishment is. And that we've got to be ignored because we're, for whatever, you know, I'm trying to, those, uh, I'll quote from the article. Now, those now urging Herbert to veto the bill argue that the parts of the bill assign the newly created Utah Division of Land Management and the old Division of Wildlife Services responsible for enforcing the law on state land is somehow an unlawful overthrow of local authority. Okay. Well, when it comes down to the, the mice and the, the cattle and the deer and the elk and the owls and the worms and the grasshoppers and the ranchers, I suppose they're wildlife too, the sheriff will be neutered in that sense. They won't have any – they don't want Oregon to spread. The virus had to be Contained. stamped out. We've and got to do some antibiotics on the people. The little minions in the Utah legislature are hoping with this, this uh, DLM – freak show that that the feds will let them carry the conspiracy forward yeah they they, they want into the big game and this is how they're doing it and so they, they resort to nor to name calling it the Salt Lake tribune says it seems that governor herbert is getting, being lobbied by some of the more extreme elements of the anti-federal movement to veto a, the bill so 
of course, we're anti-federal, right? Like Thomas Even Jefferson, though we're yes. We're constitutionalists. We believe in the federal constitution. We're anti-federal government. Patrick Henry, Thomas right. Jefferson, they were all anti-federalists. <laughs> I, we're in good company, we're but good company. but that guy's a uh, that guy's an ignoramus. Like I said, <laughs> all, it's it's he's standing true to the brand. Who I don't know who runs the the Tribune right now. Years ago, it was Joe Cant. Joe Cannon ran the the Deseret Rag, and that was Congressman Cannon's brother. Right. How nice would it be to have a newspaper edited by your brother if you're a congressman? <laughs> we should we should look into that. But it, now, it, cause, so it starts off saying that we're violent. You know that that this could erupt into violence. It seems like they're. They're insinuating that our side would be violent. We've never threatened violence. We've never engaged in violence, so I don't know where they're getting that from, especially when, like I said earlier, the government is the one that's always instigated and initiated the violence. But it closes off with leaders of the movement to wrest federal land away from the feds may find that they have created a monster. So, so Mike Noel and Ken Ivory have created a monster in defending Utah. It is up to them to get ahead of this silly until it becomes violent idea before it gets away from them all together. Okay, so they're, they're telling Ken Ivory and Mike Noel to get ahead of this idea before it becomes violent. You don't want it to spread. The Renaissance had to die with Lavoy. They want you to be a dum-dum. They don't want you on the land, period. They want you to live in the city. They want. They don't want you to know what it's like to go out and and pick wildflowers and hunt deer and watch the rabbits and get some fresh air. You're supposed to live in the city, breathe the smog, <laughs> breathe the stericycle exhaust, and listen to rap music and hang out on the playground. And so, I'd like to know. It's it's kind of it seems to be purposely ambiguous, where it talks about it's up to them to get of the uh, to get ahead of the silly idea. Cause so. What does that mean, to get ahead of this uh, idea that might become violent, according to this Tribune, before it gets away from them? So what are they afraid of, it getting away from them? Are they afraid, afraid that we're getting too much notoriety, that we're actually showing what this bill is about, that these bills are actually about stripping away power from the people and giving it to regional bureaucracies and regional law enforcement? That's exactly what they're afraid of. And so they need to get – so the, 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 the Tribune is now giving their marching orders to Ken Ivory and Mike Noel. So if the Tribune is now giving advice, they're saying, you know, so, so guys – Or vice versa. We've got to control this thing. And so you – and so he's telling Mike Noel and Ken Ivory to get ahead of this. So it seems like they're beyond the same side. So they're saying that Mike Noel and Ken Ivory's position isn't the one that's dangerous to the power structure. Because they're the ones the Tribune wants to be able to keep ahead of this idea and to squelch what we're talking about, squelch the, uh, the exposure that, this, that these bills are a bait and switch, that they're not actually about getting your lands back, that they do create regionalism. In fact, that was one of the, uh, the, one, one of the few uh, arguments that we ever got back. So whenever we talk about these bills, the response has always been, well, yeah, it does what, what you say it does, but you got to do what, what you got to get done politically. And then we got one response that said that, well, there's no police force, and so you can't be called a government. Well, HB 276, there's your new police force. For the record, it was signed. It was correct? signed two days ago by the governor. Okay, government. so thank you for calling if you tried to get him to veto it. Thank you for calling if you did your duty to scare your representatives into standing up for what's right. But nevertheless, it looks like, of course, it hasn't been funded yet. So we could still, it's the the Gestapo is not going to march on an empty stomach or without lunch money. <laughs> so we've got to continue to expose it and let them and and re, help people realize what's going on. The Tribune is afraid that we're going to stop Mike Noel and Ken Ivory's movement, and so they're urging them to get ahead of us on this. In fact, uh, the lieutenant governor last week was at a dog and pony show put on by Mike Noel where they trotted out all of their government officials um, saying that people that know how to read don't know how to read, what, that words don't actually mean what they say. And, uh, my, and uh, Lieutenant Governor Cox was there and was explaining 
about the uh, the movement to get the governor to veto the bill. Let's let's it's right here on we've got it recorded, and we is this queued up on the computer? We need to. And, oh, we let that go. Passcodes. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. Where's the FBI? It's on, it's on a, <laughs> I got to break into this guy's phone, and I can't do it. We have to get uh, the uh, person that recorded it for us to let us know what the uh, passcode is to access the phone. It Everything's recorded. a passcode. You think you live in a free country. Everything's a passcode. How many passwords and passcodes and key phrases do you have, Ben? A thousand? I don't even know all of them. You go to work, you get a passcode to get into the gate. And then there's a special code for the door. And then there's a code for your locker. Then you scan in your little your RFID badge. And then you type in a, 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 a you. There's six different passcodes I got to enter before I even start producing for the day. Well, we'll we'll get that passcode. But what the Lieutenant Governor Cox said, you'll have to take our word for it until we can play the audio. But I've got the audio for you. Um, he was at this event last week, and w- what he said was, the governor can't veto this without b- the uh, permission of those that have worked so hard to get the bill passed. So your governor is telling you that he can't actually do his job without the permission of the legislature. Now He's lying again. So does that mean he got permission from the legislature to veto constitutional carry? I guess so. No, he's lying again. <laughs> That's what he does. And so you, it, it, was he li- is he lying then where he stood up to the legislature, or is he lying now when he says he can't veto a bill that they pass without their permission? Do you remember that video where Herbert comes to the microphone and he just happens to throw open his suit and he's strapped on the right side with his pistol? What a loser. <laughs> what a boob. Ah, I support the – that's like anybody, any presidential candidate. Cruz man walking out of the field with his break-open shotgun and his – perfect blaze orange vest although the best was president Kerry back in the day but right silly people so as we when we get back from the break we'll be uh, talking with uh, a person that was at the refuge and that uh, understood what was going on this is ben mcclintock with jared green and this is the naked truth where we think right and wrong about right and left of the liberty lineup show on am 630 k-talk.com well, for more information about this topic, go to our Facebook page, Liberty Lineup Radio Show, like and share, and we'll be back after the break. This is Ben McClintock, and we are back on K Talk Radio, AM 630, K-Talk.com, with the Liberty Lineup Thursday segment of the show, which is the Naked Truth, where we think right and wrong, not right and left. Of course, we are sponsored by Patriot Mobile. People have been asking us how they can join our grassroots network and to get our updates and alerts. Just go to libertylineup.com. That's libertylineup.com and sign up. And if you like what you're hearing, you can support the cause of liberty with a donation of any amount. That's libertylineup.com. You can also like and share our Facebook page, the Liberty Lineup Radio Show. Let me grab that uh, note card right there. The station's asking us to... Talk to you about, uh, if your business, serve the emergency preparedness and survival community. If so, you have to be at PrepperCon 2016. Last year, there was more than 11,000 people in attendance looking for your survival and emergency preparedness goods. Call 385-282-6686 to get signed up or go to PrepperCon.com. That's the nation's biggest and best emergency preparedness and survival expo. So before we went to the break, and as we're getting our guest on the uh, line here, trying to reach him, he is in hiding because of uh, what he witnessed, and so trying to access th- this, uh, our, our guest. But as, as we do, we were talking before we went to the break about the fallout of HB 276, the bill that uh, would take away more power away from your local sheriff. And it was amazing how the response that we got from you, our listeners and our, our readers at defendingutah.org. And it was just, it was huge. The, uh, the, the lieutenant governor even said he was surprised about the response that they were able to get. And so whenever... He hated it. He hated it. <laughs> and so whenever you have that kind of, 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 a, of a response to the power structure, the power structure freaks out. They go into meltdown mode. And so they started going around 
um, spreading lies, saying that defending Utah and Liberty lineup is just a bunch of liberals and that we're just saboteurs to the Liberty movement and going around trying to find out who, you know, where I live, who I work for, all, all that kind of stuff, using possibly his, uh, they were accessing government records, all that kind of stuff. And uh, Kate Daly, a friend of ours who has a radio show down in St. George, uh, you should listen to at least the podcast of that. Um, now, you're going to click down the uh, the circle button right there at the bottom of the, right, that's what you're going to play. So she she did a response to what, no, because that goes to the website, sorry, mm-hmm. no. That um, she did a response. She she really laid out clearly what it means when the uh, should the circle arrow that thing right there should work. If you see so, somebody we'll that quick. is We're working on overtime, Hold on. so she 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 witnessed that because I was on her show talking about this when Mike Sen- uh, Representative Mike Noel goes down to her station demanding to be on the air. And so just kind of he's doing this a lot to a lot of the different uh, talk shows around the state. And, and so Kate Daly had a, a response to what, what, ha- what, what does it really mean when you see this activity happen? So go ahead and play that now. If you see somebody that is working overtime, double time, to annihilate character, to take down the agency that, that uh, exposed this, and that was DefendingUtah.org, it's very interesting to me the lies that have been spread about DefendingUtah.org. Oh, they're Soros's uh, funding them, which I find so funny because they're really kind of a starter company. And it, it, it's actually, I mean, it's actually such grassroots. But, um, but because they're calling out the Republican Party as much as they are the Democrat Party, um, I guess a lot of people in Utah have a problem with that. What I like, and I don't want them to go away, is the fact that we do have a, 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 an organization that's willing to expose both. And I would suggest that, that we should be happy about that. Um, the rumors aren't true. Uh, they're about as far from liberals as you can get, um, because I know, I know the guys that run it. Uh, ben McClintock goes by a pen name. A lot of people do that. Ben Franklin did that, for Pete's sakes. Um, the... Um, uh, the owner of Daily Caller, the editor of Daily Caller, does that, goes by a different name. Tyler Durden, you'll see him on all kinds of conservative rags. That is a pen name. That isn't the real name. Only because when they're exposing stuff, it's for safety, um, and they know that. And so this has, this has been happening since the dawn of time, and it will continue to happen. But there has been a lot of character assaults on that, on DefendingUtah.org, and who is this mysterious, scandalous character, Ben McClinton? I'm, I'm thinking, are you kidding me? <laughs> They've been... Uh, are you going to say that about Ben Franklin, too? Who's this mysterious character <laughs> that is going by a pen name? Um, it's ridiculous. And what it does is it diverts the attention away from the text of the bill. We can see what it is when, some, when the uh, establishment is so afraid of you that they're willing to stoop to such, really, frankly, lies, even Utah policy. They call us arch-conservative constitutionalists. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by that, but it's obviously not, not liberal. And so it's something that uh, is really – we can really tell what's, what they're really about when they, when they stoop to this. You're catching flack when you're over the target. Exactly. Ben was stepping on some toes by, by – And by their response, you can tell that some of the tactics that we use work. And so if you want to help us and support us in our efforts, we'll help you go to the website, DefendingUtah.org, make a donation, find out about membership – but uh, but, but we need your help. Become a member. It's ten bucks a month. Become a member. Oh. You asked me to become a member, and I didn't want to become a member. Nobody wants to do anything, <laughs> but I did anyway because I was asked to do. And it's no one else is going to do it for you. Nobody's going to come to your aid. You have to stand up for your freedom, your family. That this time is for you, not for somebody else. If you wait for somebody else to do it, you'll all be in the boxcar together. How is that for a <laughs> promotion? And that's something that I say on the show a lot is I don't want to be the most informed person in the concentration camp, meaning that it doesn't do you any good to say, oh, look, I, I knew about this tyranny coming, if we don't do anything about it. We, we've got to act. We've got to be doers of the word.